You are listening to The Real Men Feel Show with Andy Grant. Real Men Feel encourages men to allow and express all of their emotions. Despite what you may have been taught, all emotions do serve you. Real Men Feel is committed to engaging in discussions that most men aren't having, but you don't need to be a man to join us. The Real Men Feel Show is produced weekly for your growth and enjoyment. Listen to us on podcast platforms including iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many more. You can also watch the show on YouTube by visiting realmenfeel.org slash YouTube. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or subscribe on iTunes by visiting realmenfeel.org slash iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at realmenfeel.org and at facebook.com slash realmenfeelshow. All links mentioned in each episode are in the show notes found on the blog at realmenfeel.org. Real Men Feel is brought to you by The Good Men Project. Visit goodmenproject.com for more of the conversations no one else is having. Your reviews, comments, feedback, and participation are welcome during the live show and anytime in our Facebook group, on Twitter, or at realmenfeel.org. Now, let's get into this week's show. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Real Men Feel. This is your host, Andy Grant. And it, one of the great things about this show, at this, this is episode 118, is just the variety of men I, I get to meet and, and hear their stories and help them share their stories and their journeys. And their, they always uh, inspire me. And I know from feedback from listeners, they, they inspire you as well. So we're really just going to get right into it, introduce you with a, another man sharing his story and, and how he's making, a, making the world a better place, right? Everyone's doing their part. Um, but he's a former business professional for the National Football League and Major League Baseball, now a registered yogi, mindfulness advocate, functional nutritional planner, and certified eating psychology coach. Please welcome Mr. Brandon Bennett. Hey, it's nice to see you, Andy. You too, man. And uh, yeah, yeah, this show has been a while in the making. We, we were supposed to do it, and I think I got uh, migraines, which I think I've had like twice in my life, but it was uh, a day we were supposed to do the show um, a few months ago. And, yeah, and at that time you you were in Finland, right? Yes, yes. So my partner, my fiance, she's uh, she's from Northern Europe. She's from Finland, and we kind of took a leap of faith and decided to spend the summer there. And you know, I came across you. It's it's awesome. I connected with a lot of people. You were one of those individuals, and and um, you know, just hearing about your show and and you being kind enough to offer for me to be on right now. Um, yeah, you know, we tried to make it happen then, but the timing just didn't work out. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. So I think we're here right now. Yep. So, so where are you today? I'm back in Dallas. So back in Dallas, Texas, that's where I'm originally from. And, and uh, I've been back for just over about a month now. Oh, cool. But this is, this is, uh, this is Texas's home base. This is going to stay for at least a while? Yeah, we'll see, man. Over the past, um, I'm always trying to, I love traveling. Um, and one of the things that, that I enjoy the most is really just exploring different places and asking myself, you know, what do I want to do next? And trying to push myself a little bit out of my comfort zone. So over the past two and a half years, I've been fortunate. I've gone to about 20 different countries. Oh, nice. And, uh, you know, it's like once you get a little bit of a taste of different cultures or different uh, different ways of being in other places in the world it can kind of just continue to keep sparking that 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 desire to continue to keep circling spots off on the map yeah i remember um my first big international trip was i went to kenya and i landed in nairobi and people are speaking swahili and it was and i was like i was freaking out like I was like, yeah. this, is the, this is such a mistake. I'm gonna get out of here. Like I, I didn't, I had never been somewhere. Like I just not. I'm just standing what people were saying. So I like that these. I was really like paranoid and, and jet lagged and tired. But like they're all talking about me. Oh, everyone's gonna take my stuff. I can't trust anybody. It was really freaking bizarre. Um, luckily my wife had traveled a lot. She just like relax, <laughs> breathe. We're just gonna go to the hotel and sleep and you know decide that you want to leave yeah. tomorrow. Just just wait. But I ended up having a blast. But. Um, but it was only that first time, but has that ever hit you when, when you've traveled? Do you get this kind of, oh, for sure yeah. at the beginning? Yes. You know, at the beginning I took more of a, um, I took a backpacking trip. So it was just me and myself 
and I went through about 10 different countries in Europe. Oh, wow. And it's interesting because I went through this, I went through this like authentic relating, um, it's kind of like, it's called like an orgasmic authentic relating um, therapy or it's a it's circling. So you have 10 different people and you're sitting in a room and you're essentially just, there's different prompts, but you're sitting one-on-one -on -one and you're facing other people and you're communicating how you authentically feel. And these are with some, these are with strangers. These are not with people you normally have relationships with or you have a history with. And it's interesting because other people are able to, it's not like a judgment thing, but they're able to offer up what comes up for them whenever you express yourself or if they sense any inauthenticity, you know, from what they're hearing you from what they're hearing you say. And for me, I remember thinking at the time, you know, like, ah, oh, this is, I don't want to say this is weird, but is, am I really getting something out of this? You know, like all these people are, are, are mirrors, but you've, I really, it really dawned on me because within two or three months of that, I went out to, to London and I went out to Paris and I went out to, to Barcelona and went to some of these different countries. And especially in the ones where you where English isn't the native tongue or isn't the, 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 the primary language, you really get a chance to not only see how you're perceived by other people, but you also have that mirror that is kind of illuminating on yourself because then you're able to, to see like what's popping up in your own brain or in your own mind, you know, and then you realize that it's, it's almost like you don't have, since things just are not here in the West or you're not here, you know, in the States or kind of in your own comfortable environment, you realize, man, like this, this is really coming up for me. This is not, I'm not making this up because there's no one around me. There's no friends. There's no family. There's no, I don't, I'm not watching television. You know, it's all of these different areas that, you know, come up inside of you. And I feel like when you're out of the country, you know, for, for myself personally, I've had some tremendous growth experiences and some of it has been challenging. But then when you look back and even as time passes and you look back on some of the different experiences that you had, you say, man, I, that was necessary. And I definitely gained more from that time or that experience than maybe I was even anticipating or even I even felt as it was happening. Yeah. I and mean, that's a great point because so many people, you know, think, oh, I want to go on a vacation and relax and, and relax for a lot of people means do nothing. But it, but it sounds like you're, you, you, you know, you travel outward and you travel inward at, at the same time. And you can, it sounds like you like kind of the adventure of both of those aspects. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I don't know if this is, you know, I think this is still something I'm figuring out myself, but anytime I get comfortable for an extended or for any period of time and I recognize that comfort, I'm always wanting to shock myself and do something different, whether that's traveling, whether that's, you know, I ran two marathons last year, um, just something to get me out of my routine. And a part, I think some of this comes from, you know, I have in the past, I've had this, this obsessive kind of behavior in a sense of when I'm interested in something, you know, I become super obsessed by it and I'm very passionate in it and I'm like, I want to learn as much as I can or I want to um, just fully dive into something. But then over time, and what this is what's kind of happened for me and what's appeared is you become passionate about something and you're like, you know, yes, this is it. This is the answer. You know, this is kind of like the one thing that is, this is where I'm going and this is where I'm supposed to be going and this is going to be, I don't want to say the end game, but this is going to be the, the actual kind of cherry on top. And you pursue it. You have, you know, you go into it with the best intentions and you, you learn as much as you can and you put both of your feet into it. And then life can happen and life can show you like, hey, it was meant for you to spend this amount of time on this particular area of your life for one year, two years, six months, whatever that is. But hey, it's, now it's time to focus on something else to kind of lead you down the pathway or the step that is supposed to be your next step. And for myself, I feel like that's been one of the 
the biggest learning experiences for myself is to not try to attach specifically to, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life kind of aspect, but to at least put myself to at least do my best to put myself in the position of saying, is this a challenging me? Is this a leading me or excuse me, B leading me to where I ultimately see myself or ultimately where I want to be and C is this helping other people? Is this helping bring people closer? Is it helping uplift humanity in some way? And now I feel like that's, that's kind of my barometer of, of on a, either on a day to day or on a, on a goals basis of, okay, if it's, if it's falling into these three different buckets, then I feel like I'm doing okay. Hmm. Boy, I, I tell, that sounds a lot more than okay. So if, <laughs> if, if that's just okay for you, I, I, I can't imagine what, you know, what's extraordinary for you. Um, but it, you know, is, is the challenging and leading to you to your goals and, and helping and serving others, is, is that something you're conscious of from a, from a really young age or is this something that, that you've developed as an adult? Uh, great question. I think, you know, I think as we get older, you know, and I'm, I'm 32, it's funny I had to think about that. <laughs> um, um, turning 33 here in a couple of months, but it's, it's interesting because you know, I think goals and, and what we genuinely want, um, when we can be conscious of it and say, hey, this is kind of my goals and this is what I envision. This is, you know, my future and this is what I want to experience in my future and have the greatest intentions with that. But as you live life and as different experiences happen to you or for you, you start to realize, like, maybe I'm being led in a different direction or maybe I am, it's, it's not meant for me to focus so much of my attention on what this was supposed to be, what it originally was. And maybe it's meant for me to branch out and to try something different. And when you said, was I conscious from this in an early age, it's, it's interesting. I had one of the things you, you mentioned in the intro, you know, one of the big goals I have for myself was I'm going to work in the NFL. I'm going to work for one of the top teams in the NFL, and this is going to be it. You know, I, I grew up in an environment where there was, I'm not going to say there was a lack of mindset, but there was a lot of, 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 of struggle in a sense of um, financial resources, in a sense of, you know, was evicted multiple times from different homes and different places of living. And these were happening within my childhood as well as in my early um early adolescent years. So I developed this sense of my biggest goal or, or one of the biggest aspects that I, I would think about when I set goals, um, thinking financially or career wise, was I want security, like security. I'm not going to experience this. I'm going to make X amount of dollars. I'm not going to live paycheck to paycheck. And that's it. Like that's, that's, that's the end game. If I could get a, a job doing something that I enjoy and not live paycheck to paycheck, then boom, like what else, what more is there to, I don't want to say life, but what more is there to like, what else do you need if you have those things? Right. And my early experience, it kind of, you know, it, it, it created that blueprint on a mental level um, at a subconscious level, because it was, you know, you, you had these experiences and these things are, are, are framing your reality. And then, you know, you obtain these different things as you, as you work and as you, you put more attention and awareness towards uh, your profession and, and, and wanting to be successful and you obtain these things. And then you realize like, wow, am I, am I really happy? Or is there more for me than this? Because I feel like there's more but you have this tug of war, you go back and forth because you're, you consciously know, well, this is what you said you wanted. <laughs> Brandon, this is what you said that you desired. This is what you said was kind of like the, the top of the mountain, so to speak. And then the, uh, the other side of you says, this is, you're here, but is this really what you want? Do you see yourself here two years, five years, 10 years down the line? And I think ultimately, 
a lot of us have this tug of war at, at, at some point in our lives, whether it's with our career, whether it's with relationships or, or, or whatever that may be. And it's really our decision or our choice during those times to at least, you know, make a decision or are you making a decision out of fear or are you making a decision out of opportunity and, and where you ultimately see yourself wanting to be. And for me, it took, Took some took some actual years of going back and forth. You know, I had some some other responsibilities outside of myself when it came to finances and all these different things. But ultimately, through choosing myself, becoming a little bit more selfish, um, and really spending some time and focusing on what is it that I want. Let me stop thinking about other people. You know, let me be selfish a bit. What do I want? What do I really want? I'm, I'm I'm speaking, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm speaking about all the things I don't want and I'm, I'm mad or I'm angry or I, I can't believe this is happening or, you know, I, I, I have this and I don't, even, I don't even want it. You know, you kind of look at your, you can look at yourself in a, in, in a sense of, uh, as a failure because you're, you see other people and, and this is obviously my experience, but you see other people who are struggling financially or they're struggling to to find work and, and different things of this aspect and, and this was just kind of the environment um that that i grew up in that i've seen and you almost feel guilty because you're sitting here and i'm doing really well and people are looking at looking up to me or they're saying man you have you know the greatest job or tell me how i can do what you're doing or you know, please give me advice because it seems like you have everything figured out. And I'm genuinely thinking, <laughs> I hate this. Like, I don't, I don't enjoy what I'm doing. I don't want to be here. Like, I don't want to talk about this. Like, please stop asking me questions, things like that. And, you know, over time, I think that, um, you know, one side usually wins out, you know, and you can be this angry and this disgruntled and this, this have this victim type of consciousness or you can just take a risk step out of your comfort zone and say hey get clear about what it is that you do want look at the pros look at the cons and then just continue to just step forward cool so yeah i think uh i don't even have to imagine i'm sure working for the nfl is, is like a dream position for for lots of guys so yeah. Was was there at least a period when you when you started you're working there that it did feel that good? You, did you feel the, the reward oh, and the satisfaction? Okay, absolutely. It was a, it was a, a, an amazing experience. You know, it's it was I learned so much from a lot of individuals, um, whether it be individuals above me, and I was on the business side, of course, um, or my peers. I mean, there were some very sharp, talented um, individuals that forced me to. To step my to step my own game up, to learn from them, to humble myself, and look at not only the opportunity that I was in, but also look at the amount of activity, mental activity that I learned while in that opportunity. And I just mean that to say, what led me to becoming a coach, a consultant, you know, helping people when it comes to, to mental health as well as, you know, physical and, and nutrition and, and these different aspects was, I felt like, is my story really being told? You know, am I, is, 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 is my story of why I'm passionate about these different things, is that being fulfilled in the current role that I'm in? Mm -hmm. And over time, it just kept, I kept pushing myself more and more towards you need to, to be out there a little bit more. You need to, to, to focus your, more of your attention towards how can you help people based off of your own life experience. And one of those big experiences for me was one, my pops passed away when I was 12. He passed away from cancer about from the age of eight years old to about 11 years old, I used to have these debilitating migraine headaches. Um, the best way to describe it would be anytime I would do any kind of physical activity where my heart rate would increase, whether this is playing basketball or playing soccer at recess in elementary school, if my heart rate reached a certain level where my, my breathing would increase, then I would have these throbs like 
like this, it would almost feel akin to someone hitting you upside the head with a baseball bat. Uh, that's probably the best way to describe it. And this went on for many years. And my mother at the time, she took me to, you know, to the doctor and I had all these different tests ran on my, on my brain, on my head. And they said, Hey, everything's fine. Like there's nothing wrong here. Maybe you just need to, you know, keep Tylenol on handy, like keep, you know, some kind of medication on hand or just don't be as active as physically active. And as a kid who, you know, loved playing sports, grew up playing soccer, baseball, track, did all these different things, that really wasn't an option for me. So, no, I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to, you know, play basketball and do these different things. And ultimately, it reached a point where I remember it like it was yesterday. I was trying out for a Little League. And one of the first drills that the coach had us do was to how to stop watch. He said, hey, I want to see who's the fastest person out here. And I'm going to time you from home plate to first base so that we can see who has speed. So, you know, the competitive side comes out of me and I said, all right, like I'm looking around, you know, and I grew up, I was a, I was a, I was a, a bigger kid, you know, growing up, but I always had like speed and I always was, was very athletic. So people would kind of look at me and say, oh, you know, he's probably not someone I have to worry about, but I was always, you know, very, um, I don't want to say gifted, but I, I was, I was, I was very much, um, I had a, a lot of athletic ability growing up. So I end up getting ready. You know, it's my, it's my turn. Coach says, you know, all right, Brandon, it's your turn. And says, go. And I'm sprinting as hard as I can, you know, from, to, uh, from home plate to first base. And as soon as I get there, I, I, I stop. And he's like, wow. He's like, you know, good speed, great. And as soon as that happened, I start walking away and in my head, because what would happen is my head would start throbbing. It would be like, do, 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 do. I would feel it in my heart first, and it would move up to my head. I, like, dropped to my knees. I kind of started screaming. And, and this was like a normal occurrence for me because I had been dealing with this for years. So I'm like, no, 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 just the coaches and, and, and the kids out there, like, what's going on? And I'm like, hey, hey, no, no, it's okay. Give me a few minutes. I'll, I'll be okay. I just need to... I just need to, to, you know, focus on my breath and, and, and calm down and I'll be out there to, to play again. And went to the dugout and sat in there and, and didn't feel right. You know, it just, the headache, my head was throbbing, my side was hurting. Um, fast forward to later that evening, I ended up going to the emergency room. And at that point, my vitals were off, my blood pressure was super high. Um, the doctor ran a scan on my stomach. And when they ran that scan, I had a tumor. And the tumor was the size of a grapefruit. And I'm 11 years old. You know, my mom, we had no idea about this. They said, hey, there's a mass inside of your stomach. It's, it's pretty large. It's the size of a grapefruit. We need to have invasive surgery. We don't know what this thing is. We don't know if it's cancerous or, or what it is. And, you know, I'm, I'm 11 years old at the time. And I didn't understand the depth of having, you know, that kind of surgery at that, that young of an age and how on a psychological and on a, on a, um, you know, on a trauma basis for the body, how, how those type of things can have impacts as you get older. Um, but I had this, had the surgery and it really taught me, you know, that was kind of like the first catalyst of, man, I need to pay attention to my body. <laughs> You know, I really do like this is for me, this is this is important. There's a reason why, you know, I was having these different things. There's not something wrong with me because I thought for many years I used to think about other kids and like they don't have these things. Why am I dealing with this? Why is why is it anytime I, I want to have fun and play sports? I have to deal with this. Um, and that that went away after I had the surgery and I was 11 years old. And I mentioned that my, my, my father had passed away about four months after that. And, you know, the, um, growing up without a, you know, a father, you know, kind of do those teenage years and adulthood, you're forced as a man to, to learn all these different things on your own, learning how to shave, learning how to talk to women, learning how to take care of yourself, learning about finances, learning about 
speaking up for yourself and all these different things where, you know, if you have a healthy, you know, upbringing or you have a, a healthy masculine figure in your life to show you these different things, then can, I don't want to say accelerate your growth, but you're able to experience, you know, more of a progression of turning into an adult probably faster than, you know, other people who don't have that. And I didn't have that. And I never thought of it as an excuse. I always looked at it as I'm not going to allow this, this unfortunate situation to keep me from wherever it is that I, I, I ultimately see myself going. Mm. And through the progression of, of, of my own life, a lot of that was a lot of just learning about myself, you know, even, uh, when I was younger, you know, I dealt with bullying whenever I was in around this same time. And it's interesting because you don't know the impact that these things have on you um, until you get older <laughs> and you start to see certain patterns within your own life that kind of keep reappearing and reappearing. And I know I mentioned at the beginning, you know, even with us just connecting here that things happen for a reason, you know, things happen for a reason. And it's when you become conscious of some of these different patterns that are happening, then you're able to put more awareness to them. And then you can make a choice on, okay, what, what can I do to get out of this? And, you know, I had the, the, the health, you know, issues from when I was younger, I watched my, my, my father struggle with cancer until he ultimately, um, you know, passed away. And then I had my own health issues. You know, I, I, I had the tumor that was removed. I also, the tumor came back, like my senior year of, of, of college, ended up having it removed again. Um, you know, doing a lot of stuff that I wasn't taking care of my health, you know, smoking cigarettes at one point, you know, just drinking a little bit too much, um, not really taking care of myself. And and really realizing that, you know, some of us are born and we're predisposed to certain aspects, whether it's genetic base, whether it's on a psychological base. Um, and what I've learned is each one of us, we have to put ourselves first when it comes to self-care. And the more and more that I started to learn about the body, the connection between the body and the mind, and the necessity and the need to take care of this temple that we all have, the more passionate I became about this. And this was happening at the same time when I was still working in the NFL. And I realized like, man, this stuff, this is, I'm feeling alive here. I'm feeling alive, I'm feeling alive. This is what I need to do. This is the kind of stuff I need to talk about because I feel like this touches more people and I'm able to make a bigger impact with this particular side than the side that I was in. So hopefully that's a long-winded way of answering the question. Oh, cool. So it's, I love that that's this kind of, uh, maybe a, an unconscious yearning going on when, when I want this goal, I, I want to work for the NFL yeah. and I've got it. But no, but there's still something in you being called to something else. And, yeah. and you, you were willing to, to feel that, to notice it and to take action on it, which, which is, is, what's key i think a lot of people kind of like would ignore that and no i'm I've, i'm supposed to be happy where i am no i've got money i'm secure no this has I'm yeah. to be, and like some people force themselves to stay in, in a comfort zone even when it's not comfortable right but just they yeah supposed to yeah it's it's I, all of us deal with it you know whether people want to like openly talk about it or not even you know even when you I don't know, maybe this is like a, a male type of thing. I don't want to generalize, but, you know, men, we can be very much, um, we want to achieve or we want to kind of move forward. We want to like, we're constantly focused on, on moving forward or kind of what's next type of aspect. And I'm not trying to generalize to say women don't have that, but women, you know, if we're talking about naturally, um, tend to be more, um, geared towards love. You know, if I'm receiving love, if I feel love, and, and I know that the, the dynamics are much different in regards to the workforce and, and women are now, you know, 
working and in leadership positions, and it's completely different than it was, you know, in our in in, in my parents' generation uh, or grandparents' generation. But still, I think there is all of us have this innate uh, desire to to step into something, to be passionate about life, to experience life. And to not just go through the routines of not growing, of not challenging ourselves. Um, and really the only way to take the next step, whatever that is, you know, for each and every one of us, is to really analyze where we're at. You know, the, the, the you know, say you can, the subconscious mind drives all of our conscious decisions. And if we just take a step back and we look at, okay, where are we at? And what are we doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Is this taking me closer to what I see as the end game? Or is this pulling away? Is it leaking energy? Like, is it pulling away from me and not filling me up with the resources or the vitality or what I need in order to move forward? And I think the more we can constantly do that, and it can be very uncomfortable. You know, one, one thing that I did mention that really helped me through some extremely stressful times Throughout, throughout that process was I started to take up the practice of yoga and meditating. Um, I had started meditating a couple of, I, I started meditating before I actually got into yoga, but the meditation aspect really quieted things down and allowed me to see some of those different fears that I had and some of those different areas of anxiety that were driving my decisions. And be able to look at them in the mirror and not have the same kind of emotional intensity or the emotional reactions that I had previously had to them and really quiet myself down to the point of, all right, what do you want? What is it that you want? Because it's, it, when we're in this, this fear based or this, this fight or flight, you know, go, 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 go survival mentality or this survival state, you're not going to, your creative energy or what you really want is not, you're not going to be able to really effectively tap into that. Mm. But when we can quiet things down and we can really, you know, and for some people, maybe that's meditation for, for others that could be prayer. It doesn't matter what it is. If you feel like your, 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 your mind is just overactive and there's just so much going on, you're not going to have much room to focus on other aspects of life that you may want to experience because you're just trying to get through this day and you're trying to, to put out all these fires and, and your nervous system is just, it's, it's, you know, it's on fire. You know, that's how people get burnt out. And that's how, you know, there's a, something called adrenal fatigue where, you know, your adrenals are just, just overstressed, whether it's through mental activity, whether it's through too much stimulants, um, all these things can pull on our vitality and our system. And what usually happens is something happens, you know, that pushes us to make a choice. You know, it's, it's almost like um, you know that you're doing something on a conscious level that may not be the best for you, or you know, like, nah, eh, shouldn't do this. But then when something hits the fan, that's when you're like, okay, I need to make a change. You know, I need to do something differently. And really, I think the best thing when it comes to lifestyle changes or behavior changes is to, to take more of a proactive approach. Instead of waiting for something to hit the fan, just looking at, you know, quieting yourself down, having different daily practices and rituals to be able to, to highlight these things before they get too far out of whack, and then making decisions around that so that you're not necessarily um, you know, it's like once you fall off the cliff, then it's going to take longer to actually get back up to the top of the cliff. Whereas if you fall down and you, you're able to catch yourself, you know, 20, 30 feet or 100 feet from the cliff, then it's easier to move back up. Cool. And this feels like it ties into you. You mentioned um, being selfish a couple times. And, and I think being selfish it has a bad rap. There's a lot of negativity applied to that. But what I'm, what I'm hearing from you is that when, when part of your goals and part of your mindset is to be of service, you being selfish 
and taking care of yourself and boosting your vitality and getting aware of what you want to do and tapping into that creative energy helps you serve more people. So it's like your selfishness yeah. can give you the time to fuel up so that you can actually be, be, be selfless and, and serve more people. Absolutely, man. That's very beautifully put. I think that especially, you know, now I'm of the age, I don't have any kids yet or anything like that. But, you know, I see it with friends and, and, and I see the cycle, you know, that can happen, especially when we're coming from a good place, when you have kids and you have these people that you're responsible for. These are like your little seeds. And if you don't have habits or different rituals that are in place or you haven't really been taking care of yourself and then you add a little one to the, to the you know, you don't have a routine, so then you add a little one it can just make things even that much more difficult or you're leaking more energy. You know, you're, you're in a way you don't feel like you can be selfish because someone is depending on you for their life and their survival and, 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 and they need that. And the only reason I bring that up is because I remember, you know, there was a point in time where I felt it was my responsibility, you know, whether it was, financially to be there for for family whether it was emotionally to be there for a lot of different friends um it's almost like especially within the the, the spiritual community or people who are uh, who look at themselves as, as more in, empathic it can be really easy because you can feel other people's emotions and you want to be there for them and you you have this compassion and this empathy for other people um which is great because that's is, is essentially what connects us all you know, we, we, we all have experiences and we all want to, you know, for, for focusing on, 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 you know, creating a better place for all of us to live in, then the best way to do that is to empathize with others, to kind of place yourself in other people's shoes. But I think sometimes if you're leaking too much energy, I know I keep saying that, I always say leaking, and if you're leaking too much energy in too many different ways and you're not receiving we are not either one taking care of yourself or be receiving that energy back. Then over time, it just drains you and drains you and drains you. And then you feel as if you are, it's almost like you feel like you're taken away from yourself, but not being there for everybody else. But the level that you show up for other people is a direct reflection of how you show up for yourself. Mm. So it's, it's, it's impossible for you to be like Superman or Superwoman if you are yourself completely just just off balance and completely off of whack. It's like if you're at a, you know, I was working with a business coach and um, one of the things that we talked about, he said, okay, if you're going to work with someone on a specific issue and this person, let's say it's a person who you want to you want to learn how to start a business online and you work with this coach and this coach has a track record of success. And this coach is, is this coach is at an eight, which is you're at a four, but this coach is at an eight. And if this coach is at an eight, then this coach can bring you up to the level that they are at, which is at an eight. But if you go up to that level and you want to continue to grow, then you might have to move up to a coach who's a nine, mm -hmm. or you may have to do something different as you grow along on your journey. So there's like, there's nothing wrong with um, being there for other people and, 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 and taking care of other people and, and, and stepping up to all the different responsibilities that each and every one of us have living in this world. But there's also a complete necessity, and I'm biased, you know, just from my own early experiences and what I've kind of gone through, but I'm, I'm biased. I think self-care is the absolute most important aspect of, of human life. You know, I've, I've been fortunate. I've, I've met, you know, some, some, some very, uh, you know, people who I would consider who are doing exceptionally well for themselves financially, but they have different health issues and, or they have different stressors, mega stressors. And you can just see that, Yes, you have all of this. You know, you have beautiful home. You have multi millions of dollars, but you're not. You're not happy. You know, you're not taking care of yourself. You're 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 leaking so much energy. It's almost like you're not really able to even enjoy it. 
And so, you know, I think um, the more that we can be conscious of it and the more that we can at least start doing aspects that fill us, fill our own bucket up, then the more over time we're able to, to help and serve other people as well. Right. Cool. Yeah. And uh, there was a, this conversation is reminding me of a saying I had from a coach that I worked with. Um, when you find you're living your dreams, it's time for a new dream. Mm. Right. So again, when you, you, I've got what I want, but it's not enough or there's more. And yeah. it, you know, I, I, I work as an energy coach. I work with the Akashic records and there's a common thing of, there's always more like life is about expansion and that sense of aliveness comes from doing something new, learning something about yourself or about something outside of you. But the, the life, the essence of life is more again. So that's where the, the notion of being selfish, it's not selfish to want more that that's what mm-hmm. life wants. Right. So, yeah. but uh, you, you have said, you know, leaking energy a few times or, or yeah. 20 times. <laughs> that's funny. Like a million times. <laughs> So can you explain that a little bit more? Like how, how, can, how can someone identify that they're leaking energy and, and what, what, what do they do about it? Yeah, so I think one of the best things to do is to really check in with yourself. You know, ask yourself, and you can write these different things down. Um, you know, we have emotional energy. We have physical energy. We have, you know, spiritual energy. We have mental energy. On a mental level, we'll start there. On a mental level, what are your thoughts? You know, are you are your thoughts positive? Are they uplifting? Are you experiencing a um, on a day to day basis? Are you experiencing um, thoughts that are bringing you closer to that are expanding you, or is there a lot of negativity? Or are you surrounding yourself with not only negative self self thoughts or talk, but you're surrounding yourself with negative people? You know that you've kind of you know, that are filling up your circle and are pulling away from your energy. You know, there's the physical aspect, you know, us as humans, we weren't designed um, as homo sapiens to sit for eight, 10, 12 hours a day at a desk. And in order for us to be able to take care of our bodies, we need to move. Now it doesn't have to be, you know, super vigorous, you know, each person is is different and what their goals are when it comes to working out and and, and, and moving their body. But just simple stuff, you know, moving, going for walks, stretching, um, go, being outside, breathing in fresh air. If you're constantly behind, you know, a desk or you're constantly behind artificial light, if you're up on your, all these technology items, you know, we got the cell, we got the iPads, all these different things late in the evening. Then on a physical level, your body over time starts to create the shape of, starts to create rigidity based off of the positions that you're in for longer periods of time, you know, but through movement, whether that's yoga, whether that's going for walks, stretching, you know, calisthenics, exercise, whatever that may be, and whatever speaks to a particular person, that is going to help not only increase, you know, your energy or your vibrancy, but it's also going to help your your body over time. You know, you don't want to leak energy um, in a sense of having these pains and these ailments and these aches um, within your, 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 physical, your physical body uh, was another one I said. Uh, on a spiritual level, you know, it doesn't matter what someone's um, spiritual beliefs are. You know, are these beliefs, are they driving you towards something higher? Are they driving you to be better? Or are they limiting you, limiting you and making you shrink, making you small? Um, I'm of the belief that we all have a purpose. You know, we all have something that is, is calling us to do more, to expand, to be greater than, than, than what we are. And each of us have creative outlets. Each of us has something, you know, for some that could be, you know, someone, um, some that could be cooking, for some that could be artistry, for some that could be speaking. It really doesn't matter, but are you cultivating or tapping into whatever that, that, that higher purpose or that higher being is for you and if you're not then you're leaking energy because you are essentially let's say you're in a job or you're doing something that you absolutely cannot stand then you're not expanding yourself and if you're not expanding yourself or actively doing it then you're leaking energy and you are not allowing yourself to fully to fully grow um i mentioned oh on the emotional level you know all of us have 
our emotional bodies. You know, we, we have different things that we're, we're processing, whether it's from our childhood, whether it's from our relationship with our, our significant other or it's our friends. Is there any emotional baggage that we're holding on to that no longer serves us? Whether that's something from, his, from our, our, our early adulthood, whether that's from a past relationship, whether that's from someone who said something to us to make us feel like we're less than, and we're carrying these different things and we're holding on to them. And as we're doing this, it's, it's driving our conscious decisions because it's pushing up against, um, pushing up against, um, let's say the amygdala, which the amygdala is the reptilian brain, the fear-based brain. And when we are, you have the amygdala, which is the fear-based brain, and then you have the prefrontal cortex, which is the creative brain. And they're constantly, you know, you want to do your best of turning off the amygdala. And the amygdala is just, we need it for survival, you know, for sitting here talking and, and, and something, you know, happened where a bear just comes in and it, it, it goes into your studio, then your amygdala would fire, you would release norepinephrine, your, your adrenals would, 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 would fire up, you would release cortisol, and then you would look around and you would make a decision. Like, am I going to fight this bear? Or am I going to run from it? So you need the, the fear-based brain. You need the amygdala in order to make quick decisions, in order to be able to protect yourself. The issue that can come is when individuals through fast-paced society, through all these technology items, through um, 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 our thoughts, through the foods that we're eating, all in all of these different aspects, are firing up our, 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 our amygdala, you know, our fear-based brain. And then we are making decisions that really the decisions, since we're living in a survival state, we're not making those decisions that are maybe leading us to what it is, that, where it is that we, you know, deep down had this inner desire to go to, we just can't ultimately see it. So it's interesting on my own journey, <clears throat> I've had these different levels and I'm, I'm going to continue to grow and I'm continuing to grow each and every day. But you know, the first one was for me personally, I used to be about 65 pounds heavier than I am today. And I, you know, used to have this yo-yo weight up and down. I would lose a little bit of weight and it would come back and I would lose a bit of weight and it would come back. And then I finally got to the point where I started to make more lifestyle changes. And as I made those lifestyle changes, I started to treat myself better when it came to um, the foods I was putting in or when it came to better understanding my body and understanding, okay, I'm not going to the gym to look a certain way. I'm not going to, to attract girls or whoever. I'm going there to genuinely take care of my body. And when that started to happen as a lifestyle change, the weight came off. And I felt much more energetic and I felt like, man, this is it. Like if I would have been eating this way when I was in high school and I would have been eating this way in college and all these different things, like, man, I wonder what my experience would have been, been like. And I was like, this is the answer. You know, and I went around and started kind of, I don't want to say preaching, but telling people, this is the way you need to eat and, and friends and family. And I'm sure they probably thought I was crazy and was like, you don't want to be around this guy. He is just all over the place. And then I learned that, Nutrition wasn't just the answer. You know, I started to, to focus more attention on my mental aspect. And I think having the, having the ability or the desire to look a little bit deeper into what's going on upstairs, for me, it would have not necessarily came unless I had the energy and I had the ability around the, the habits that I had created around the nutrition and things like that that had led me there then i started coming there and i said man i've dealt with depression i, I I've, I've had anxiety i have you know all these negative thoughts and all these different things about being less than like where is this stuff coming from i started meditating and started doing yoga and was like man like i feel better i feel clear i feel like i feel like a different person so then i had the nutrition and I had, had lost the weight and had started to take better care of myself. And then I had the yoga and the meditation. I was like, okay, this is the answer. Yoga and meditation, like this is it. 
And then I was working in a job. I was making, you know, making six figures. I was doing very well for myself. And I felt good nutritionally, nutritionally wise, felt good somewhat mentally, but I was like, something's missing. And I was like, I'm doing something. I'm not enjoying this. Like this, this, this sucks. Like I thought that I had the answer. I thought first it was nutrition and I thought it was yoga and meditation and taking care of the mind. And then I realized that was leading me towards purpose. Like I need to be doing something. My, my purpose has shifted, you know, not necessarily in a sense that it's, it, it, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, um, it's always been there. I just consciously couldn't see it right. until I started to make some of these different life choices. And it led me to saying like, wow, this is it. Like if I can experience this and I'm so passionate about, you know, learning as much as I can and trying to help others who may feel like there's so much noise. There's so much, you know, I can't do this or there's a million different diets and there's a million different, um, you know, you go onto Facebook or you go online and, you know, there's meditation, this, there's mindfulness and all these different things. They're, they're great tools and I incorporate them for myself and I incorporate them with different clients I work with. But I think people need simplicity. They need like a first step, a second step and a third step. And for me, in my experience, stepping into the, 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 the purposeful actions or what I feel like I'm now, which I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm living, you know, presently in, in a space where I'm, I'm creating this reality and I am feeling like I'm, I'm, I'm moving authentically in a direction that I know is, is, is where I'm supposed to be. I would have not seen those things without these other first two steps, right. you know, so I would have not been clear. Going back to, you, you've said a couple of times that everything happens for a reason. So, you know, life keeps pushing you forward to, to a purpose, to a goal that you're not consciously aware of at times. Yeah. And, and everything happening for a reason doesn't mean you like everything that happens. It doesn't mean you welcome it all, but that it, it, it is serving a point for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's interesting, you know, like, I think, I think all of us, or I think on some, some level, we, um, we're all trying to figure it out ourselves, you know, like, you know, I think there's, there's, if anybody, I've always been the kind of person I like to communicate in a way of, Hey, this is what I've learned in my experience. And this is what I've studied. And, and this is kind of what's been true for me. I can share that with you if you're open to it. But, you know, if this isn't for you, that's fine, too. There's no attachment to it. Right. Um, I've never done well with, you know, some of the, the, the actual guru type of, of information. Like, hey, like, listen to me. I know all the answers. Like, this is the way you're supposed to do something because all of our life experiences are different. Each of one of us are at different, different times in our journey that it's, it's, it's almost like... Um, Again, you know, when we talk about spiritual beliefs, I feel like when we are in a place where we're open to receive answers, we're actually looking for something that we're looking for something greater or we're looking for an answer to, to, to what it is that we need to focus our attention on in the present moment. When we're in that space of openness and in that space of being thankful or having gratitude for where we are, at this particular moment in time, then it's so much easier for us to receive those answers and receive those, you know, whether it's people or whether it's, it's just, um, you know, intuitive insights to, to help us on our paths or on our journeys. So you've mentioned a lot of things that, that you've done and used in yogi and meditation and diet and exercise. It, are, are those, is there something else or is it those items like what can, what can people do? What tools can people use to help them discover what they really want to, to raise their awareness of that? Yeah, I think it's interesting. I was just meeting um, with the gentleman just, just recently and really it ultimately depends on where you're at. But if you're in a place and I'll speak, cause I know there's a lot of people, I speak to a lot of different people about this particular aspect when it comes to, to, to purpose as well. But if you're in a spot where you feel stuck, where you feel like I've been doing the same thing over and over and over again, and it's not leading me to where I want to go, I feel trapped, you know, whatever that is, whether that's in your health, whether that's in, in, in your job, um, 
and you feel like you have no actual guideline or no step, you know, what, what do I need to do next? I think the biggest thing, the biggest, the easiest way to start is to one, change your vibrational state to one of gratitude. And this may sound very simplistic, but by doing affirmations, how, whatever that may be specifically for someone, you know, I am grateful for, I am grateful for the sun coming out today. I am grateful for, you know, me, me, even though I'm not in a job that I, I may, you know, want to be in, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to take care of myself. I'm grateful to have friends. I'm grateful to have this, grateful to have this. Changing your vibrational state by repeating these patterns and being able to quiet yourself down so that you're in more in a sense of openness and then being real with yourself, you know, being real with yourself in a sense of what is it that I'm doing right now that I know is no longer serving me, you know, writing these things out, being very upfront with yourself. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I know I'm not, a, I'm not a, I'm not a big quick trip kind of guy, a quick trick kind of guy. I think this stuff requires work. And it is, you know, depending on the amount of time that it takes is dependent upon the person. But really, we all have the answers. They're already inside of us. But it's a matter for us to be more intentional, to quiet ourselves down, to be more intentional about what is it that we want, being more intentional on, okay, what am I doing? I need to take two steps back. You know, one of the, the, the easiest or most simplistic steps that I recommend for everyone is one, start each morning with a gratitude practice. So you have a journal, you have 10 different things on there. You repeat those every single morning. You also can repeat it before you go to sleep in the evening time. Two, starting to nutritionally just take better care of yourself. Now, if you don't know what that means, I know there's tons of information on the internet, but eating more nutrient dense foods foods that, you know, we as, as homo sapiens, um, we grew up on a more of a, you know, we grew up on, on, on game, on food, on nuts, berries, you know, nature um, is what we, as, as a genetic, as a biological species, it's, it's the foods that our bodies recognize. So eating more foods that you know, I know when we're, we're kids, say eat more fruits, eat more veggies, but eating more of these foods that, that's, that our bodies are able to, to better assimilate and process because that's who we are as, as humans. And then three, just spending more time with yourself, you know, and I know, again, that may sound simplistic, but by spending more time with yourself, and I'm really a huge proponent um, advocate for journaling. Because it's, it's journaling can be so powerful because, you know, you don't have to show it to anyone. It's your thoughts. It's how you feel. It's, it's you expressing yourself. And you have a date. You have a time. And you're able to go back and look at where you were at a year, a year ago or where you're currently at in the present moment. And you can start the process of putting more attention and more awareness to what you do want, writing these different things out. And then actually putting together the steps that you're going to take in order to, to get there. And I'm not telling people to, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I, during my journey, I had the experience of resigning from the job and essentially starting over from scratch. And that for me was the only way possible for me to be able to, on an energetic level, be able to, to handle and express myself and be able to learn and grow. Um, each person's situation is different. Each person's financial situation is different. And I, I, I mentioned this just to say, you know, you got to realize what's gonna be the best for you, but realizing what's the best for you comes with you spending more time with yourself and then realizing what it is that you want before you, you know, make, decisions that can can alter or change your life right so it's not like you're you're not leading workshops where step one everybody resign very very clear yeah that is that's 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 not my um that's, that's not my plan for everybody cool 
And, and I do want to uh, second something about gratitude and journaling. Those are both practices that were recommended to me for years by different therapists and counselors. And I was like, no way, no way. And in my head, it was, you know, a 10 year old girl and dear diary, the boy looked at me today and like, I'm not going to do that. It's ridiculous. But when I finally did and started a gratitude practice in daily journaling, uh, my life just turned around. So that really is one of the, the quickest things you can do to change your vibration, to change your outlook of, of life and how you feel about yourself. But th there's one more thing that's been, been said a few times, and, and I say this a lot myself too, and I want to ask you for a, a, a little, dig a little deeper. How do you know when something is no longer serving you? Mm. Good question. You mm. know, it's interesting because some things can feel good, but they may be attachments or things that we're depending on. Um, one of the things that I recommend or I try to look at for myself, and I also use this with different clients, is what is it that you are leaning on as a crutch? You know, meaning when we have attachments to anything, attachments tend to create some sense of dependency. And anything that can be that we can become dependent on can be we can become addicted to. And let's say if you're what you are doing, if you're if if it's is it something that you can do without? Is it something that is actually leading you and and you on a vibrational level? It's making you feel good, and you're looking at it and you're saying it's 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 actually serving me, or is it something that is you know, over time, you know, on a, on a conscious level that really this is probably not the best thing that is for me. Uh, as an example, what can I use as, an, as a self-example? Um, smoking cigarettes. I smoked cigarettes for about two or three years and I stopped and I graduated to doing chewing tobacco. And again, for me, this was, this was, a, a, it was almost like a, it was a crutch. It was going from, okay, I know this is bad. This is bad for my lungs, you know, to, okay, I'm going to do the chewing tobacco thing. I'm not, this is, I'm saying this without judgment. This is, this is my, my thing. And I was doing it and I was doing it. And I started to notice that my gums, you know, over time, even though I'm not smoking, so it's not going in my lungs, I noticed that my gums started to, to rip over time. And I was just like, man, it sucks because, you know, like, I enjoy this. This is kind of like the buzz that I get. It, it, it had become a crutch. And it got to the point that I said, all right, I'm going to just cold turkey do without this and see, you know, what it leads to. And I cold turkey, I just gave it up. And I noticed, I was just like, okay, you know, that energy, whenever you are addicted or whenever you release something, that energy has to go somewhere. So your body feels it, you recognize it, like, man, like it, it, I want to do something with this. Normally at this time of the day, I'm doing this. And, and, and being able to recognize that energy and recognize that, that, that attachment and asking yourself, is it serving me? And if it's not, then releasing it or at least putting the attention and the awareness towards recognizing it so that it can become a lifestyle change around it so that you're not you're not as easily tempted or you're not as easily pulled towards towards doing it cool got it so it's really just uh yeah take taking the time and and, and asking yourself and let yourself receive that answer and as you said earlier like we, we all know everybody knows the answers already it's just are they willing to receive them acknowledge them and accept them yeah but and i want to be clear on this too there are some people where, you know, some people live in 100 years old, 110 years old, and they smoke a cigarette a day, mm. you know, like, they seem very healthy, like that works for them. It's a matter of finding what works for you on an individual, on an individual level. Right, right. Yeah. If, if, and I've always found this, that if I meet someone that's like, oh, here's the one thing you got to do, well, the one thing you never should do is like, yeah, that usually kind of falls apart. For someone, it might, yeah. it might be, here's the one thing a lot of you could do is like kind of the more uh, honest, honest version of it. But yeah, cool. So um, I, I really appreciated our, our time with you. Yeah, I find you, you're very engaging. And if people listening are feeling the same way, um, where, where can they go to, to get some more Brandon? Yeah, so I have my, my website, 
which is it should be in the show notes right yeah but it's it's uh, for anyone listening it's it's brandonbennett.com so just my first name last name uh dot com i also have instagram which is brandon middle initial b bennett uh, that's my Instagram handle. And then I also have a Facebook page, you know, feel free to send me a message on there. Um, that is, I want to say it's interesting. I think I just recently changed it, but um, maybe Brandon Bennett health. It's a Facebook handle. So yeah, those are the easiest ways to uh, reach out to me. I offer coaching, you know, kind of around the exact same things that we've discussed. It's nutrition based, mindset based, purpose based. Um, coaching for people who want more out of life, who want to be healthier, who want to live with more vitality, who want to step into the greatness that, that they know that they have deep inside of them. And, and yeah, it's uh, feel free to reach out to me. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. It's, it's very unique to, to meet kind of a, a, a nutrition and health coach that is, is going way beyond that as well. Right. You're yeah. truly, yeah, that, that, the, the all-purpose health, ener- energetic health, physical health, exercise, uh, food, it, it's, it's all there. You're, you're the total package. <laughs> I appreciate that. Cool. Uh, again, th- thanks for joining us, Brendan. Thanks for everyone listening. Wherever you are listening, uh, give us a like, a share, a comment. Give us some feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, for more of the conversations no one else is having, visit goodmenproject.com. Visit realmenfield.org uh, to find us on the Facebook group, to send us comments. Uh, shoot us uh, an email about what you liked about this show, what you'd like to see on future shows. And as always, be good to yourself. Thank you for listening to Real Men Feel. Reach out to us at realmenfeel at gmail.com. Learn more about Andy Grant at theandygrant.com. Until next time, visit realmenfeel.org or the Real Men Feel Facebook group and share what you thought of this episode. Please give this podcast a review on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you are discovering Real Men Feel. Visit goodmenproject.com for more of the conversations no one else is having.